Hello, in the first presentation, we discussed meaning and need of a constitution, the making, sources and authority of Indian constitution. In this presentation, I'll talk about the philosophy, criticism and limitations of our constitution. Let us discuss the political philosophy. Political philosophy means to understand the conceptual structure of the constitution. That is, it helps us to understand the meaning of terms like rights, citizenship or democracy. It also explains the values on which our constitution is built, like equality, liberty, justice. Political philosophy also helps to explain the reasons behind the framing of law. When Indian constitution is read along with the constituent assembly debates, we are to justify values inserted in our constitution. Political philosophy helps in finding the moral value of the law. And it also helps us to come up with correct interpretations of the values in our political system. The preamble of the Indian constitution serves as a brief introductory statement that sets out the philosophy of the Indian constitution. The preamble was adopted by the Constituent Assembly after the drafted constitution had been approved. The basic idea behind it was that the preamble should be in conformity with the provisions of the constitution and express in a few words the philosophy of the constitution. For better understanding of the preamble, we can divide it into four parts. The first part, that is the beginning lines, embodies the source of the constitution, the people of India. It is the people of India who have adopted, enacted and given to themselves the constitution. The second part suggests the nature of the state. India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. The third part reflects the objectives that we need to achieve justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. The last part contains the date of adoption of the Indian constitution, November 26, 1949. Now, let us discuss briefly the political philosophy or the basic principles on which our constitution is built. First, individual freedom. The Indian constitution is committed to individual freedom. During the British rule, the Vernacular Press Act and Rovlath Act had tried to deny this basic freedom to Indians. Freedom of expression was therefore made the soul of the Indian constitution. Social justice Social justice signifies equal treatment of all citizens without any social discrimination based on caste, colour, race, religion or gender. It means absence of privileges for any particular section of the society and improvement in the conditions of backward classes and women. Third, respect for diversity and minority rights is also one of the basic principles. The Indian society was a unique blend of societies. Thus, the constitution recognized community-based rights. The rights of minorities are safeguarded in India. Secularism is also one of the basic principles. India is a country with many religions, but the constitution stands for a secular state of India. There is no official religion for India and no discrimination on account of religion. The constitution ensures equal freedom for all the religions. Universal Adult Franchise Indian democracy functions on the basis of one person, one vote. Every citizen of India who is 18 years of age or above is entitled to vote. The Indian constitution establishes political equality through universal adult franchise. Federalism India has a federal structure with many unitary features. Like all federations, we also have three levels of government, division of power and a written constitution. However, single citizenship, residuary powers of centre and emergency provisions provide a unitary bias. National identity is also one of the basic principles. Indian constitution tries to create a common national identity. 
India is a nation with multi-ethnic, religious and multilinguistic identities. Common national identity has been given preference so that the unity of the country is not endangered. The Indian constitution is also subjected to criticism. Let's talk about three main criticisms. First, it is regarded as unwieldy, that is too heavy. Indian constitution is a very large document. This criticism is true to some extent. Our constitution on the other hand is also a well organized document. Everything is contained in one single document. The second criticism raised against our constitution is that the body which made the constitution was unrepresented. That is the constituent assembly. At that time, when constituent assembly was formed, adult franchise was not yet granted. And most members came from the advanced sections of the society. However, if we read the debates of constituent assembly, we find a vast range of issues and opinions mentioned in it. Moreover, freedom fighters who were trusted by the people were part of it. Majority of the members were from Congress. And the first general election of India proved people's faith in it. Moreover, the process of making the constitution was made as much democratic as possible. The third criticism against our constitution is that it is an alien document borrowed from the West. But our constitution makers did not blindly borrow. They changed and adopted the borrowed provisions according to our conditions. If it was based only on Indian culture consisting of caste inequalities, child marriage, dowry system, then progress would not have been possible. We cannot say that Indian constitution is perfect and flawless. There is always scope for improvement. Now, let us discuss certain limitations of the constitution. First, centralized federation. At the time the constitution was framed, it was necessary for the center to have overriding powers concerning the states. Princely states had to be merged with the union. Reorganization of state boundaries and renaming of many states had become essential to accommodate regional identities and aspirations. However, now there is a serious need to review the provisions related to center-state relations. Making the states more responsible for matters falling within their domain shall help the states contribute effectively and also reduce the burden of the center. The second limitation of our constitution is that it has failed to effectively deal with issues of gender justice, particularly within the family. Women enjoy unequal rights of property, inheritance and children. Third, the objective of directive principle of state policy is to provide the individual with socio-economic and political justice. However, we cannot force a state to make law to implement provisions of directive principles of state policy. For example, the equal distribution of material resources is to prevent resources from being concentrated in one or fewer hands. But in reality, we still have a very large population living below the poverty line. Hence, we need to make directive principles of state policy as an integral part of fundamental rights. Every written constitution in the world has its own unique characteristics and no exception is the Indian constitution. Federal system with unitary features, fundamental rights, fundamental duties, emergency provisions, independent and integrated judicial system, combination of rigidity and flexibility are the prominent features that distinguish it from the other constitutions. The Indian constitution undoubtedly has played a significant role in maintaining peace and prosperity in our country.